I'm taking this little tiny computer with me on a trip. It's got a Snapdragon X Elite in it, and I'm leaving behind my trusty M2 Max MacBook Pro which is pretty heavy in exchange for this tiny little machine to see if this thing can do everything that I need on a trip for work. Let's go. For the past few months, I've been putting the latest X Elite laptops through their paces. These laptops actually outlasted everything else that I tested, including x86 laptops and even MacBooks in real world tests. You can find my tests, I'll link to the videos down below. So when Qualcomm reached out and they offered to sponsor a video sending me this tiny little Dell XPS 13, I thought, could this little machine really handle everything I need on an entire trip? So there I was, should have been vacationing, but I did bring some work. Anybody know what country I'm in, by the way? A little quiz for you. And this Dell XPS 13 has been my only machine. This was a true test of how it performed in the real world. Starting with the basics, web browsing, Bluetooth devices, connecting to public Wi-Fi. Hey, it's this one? Um, yeah, I don't care. Security people can yell at me. All these things work smoothly. It's actually kind of nice for a change to carry such a small laptop when I'm running around between places. I was streaming music, handling some files, watching videos, and using Notion for notes and organization. Now, interestingly, Notion was originally x86 when these Snapdragon laptops first came out. But now there's actually a native version of this, just a little bit later, which really demonstrates what's gonna happen here. Uh, yes, there's gonna be a few software vendors that are behind, but everybody's gonna get on board. Well, hopefully everybody. It might take some companies more time than others, just like it did when Apple rolled out Apple Silicon. Now, during my trip, I was using Notion, but I was using the x86 version, and that was using Prism. That's the translation layer that's built into Windows that automatically translates x64 or x86 software for this type of hardware architecture. And you know what? I didn't even notice it ran flawlessly. It is uh, a note-taking app, though. I was in Slack meetings, I was in Zoom meetings, I used Slack and Zoom daily for work, and those worked without a hitch for team check and video calls, everything ran pretty smoothly. Now, as far as the tech stuff goes, I did pre-install a lot of the software. I didn't want to install Visual Studio from some cafe in Portugal. Oh yeah, did you guess that? So I pre-installed all the tools I needed to take with me. VS Code, Visual Studio, Android Studio, yeah. Um, Android Studio is not compatible with this type of architecture yet, but if you want to build Android apps like I was doing, then there are workarounds and I made a separate video for that as well. I'll link to that video down below. Basically, you just need to have uh, an Android hardware device that you're deploying to instead of the emulator and then you're fine. So I did a few builds. In Visual Studio, I was working on a Blazor application, which is a .NET web application. I worked on JavaScript apps and I built and deployed to the Play Store. And the performance was just as snappy as you'd expect from a real laptop. I mean, this is a, a real laptop. It's just, it's like a little toy, <laughs> but it can pretty much do everything I need. It's just a small screen. I'm not used to that, but it's, it does the job. But there's only so much you can do when traveling. This was a vacation after all, so I didn't get a chance to test everything that I would normally do, like, for example, heavier tasks, video editing, machine learning, those kinds of heavy duty tasks. So I had to wait until I got home. Let's dive into what I did next. It's a, it's a little different for me because I am used to traveling with a 16 inch MacBook Pro. And this is, this is something different. Truck. And my backpack is a lot lighter, way lighter. It's pretty nice. It's been a week since I came back from my trip and surprisingly, there's still juice left in the battery. To be fair though, I was on vacation, so I wasn't using it eight hours a day. In total, it was probably about five to six hours, but those hours were completely free of stress of worrying about the battery or going to a cafe and restaurant and having to carry the power adapter with me. With these machines, those days are over. And lately there's been a surge in uh, running LLMs locally. I'm doing a series of videos on comparing different hardware and how it runs LLMs locally. 
especially for developer scenarios. So check those videos in the channel. I'll link to some of them down below. And I was curious to see how this machine would stack up. So I installed LM Studio, which is a pretty common tool you'd use to run LLMs locally. And right on their download page, you'll see the option for Windows with this type of architecture. I installed it and ran it, but it didn't exactly work the way I expected it. While LM Studio itself was running fine on this architecture, the model was not taking full advantage of the GPU. However, the speed of generation I got was actually pretty good for an 8 billion parameter model, considering it's running fully on the CPU. Now, some of my tasks also involve video editing and photo editing, and I use the Adobe Suite, Photoshop, and Premiere Pro. Photoshop has a native version for this architecture, which runs perfectly fine, tested it out. However, Premiere Pro doesn't. Now, even though the current version of Premiere Pro doesn't run natively, it runs under x86 emulation. However, I was pretty surprised that not only was it able to work well, but I was able to scrub the 4K timeline without issues. The interface did give me a little bit of lag, so it's not the perfect user experience, but I'm sure Adobe is working on it. So back in the day, I used to do a little bit of DJing and I found a perfect use for that new NPU, something I wish I would have had many years ago in my DJ days. <laughs> this is crazy. Check this out. Okay. I can leverage the NPU in the XLE to take out different parts of the song in real time. It's called Neural Mix. Here's all the parts playing, bass, drums, harmonics, vocals, everything. And I'm gonna take out the drums. What? Bring back the drums. That is crazy. Take out everything else except for the drums. And everything is happening on the NPU of the machine. Check it out. That's a nice use of the MPU. This is fun. And while I'm not a big gamer, I couldn't resist trying out Doom Eternal to see how well it would run. Oh, sh <laughs> Oh my God, it's been a while. All right, all right, all right, all right. I, I got you, I got you, I got you. Oh yeah. <laughs> got him. Now, I'm not saying this laptop will replace your gaming rig, but in my case, it worked pretty well. Love that music in Doom. <laughs> so after using the Snapdragon X Elite machine on the road and back at the office, I can say that it's a solid performer. Now I know this is a sponsor video, so I kind of have to say nice things about it. But up until now, I've already made a bunch of non-sponsored videos where I bought my own machines and I've tested them. So I was already pretty confident about how good these things are. Specifically about the Dell XPS 13, the ergonomics aren't my favorite. That's why in the office, I'm using it with an extra keyboard, mouse, and monitor. But for portability and battery life, this thing is rock solid. And this is not even the longest lasting X Elite laptop. There are others that I tested that last even longer. It just happens to be the smallest. I've also taken the Surface Laptop 7 out with me a bunch of times, and that's the one that lasted the longest in my tests. Now, of course, there's going to be some apps that still need to be optimized and built for running under this architecture, but most of the ones I use already run natively, and the Prism layer handled the rest just fine. Now, one of the downsides is that these are priced a little bit higher than their Intel counterparts. This Dell XPS 13 was $100 more when it came out. If I find any updated pricing or deals, I'll link to them down below in the description, so keep an eye out for that. However, the X Elite version outlasted the Intel version by a lot. So if battery life matters to you, and it should, it's a laptop, then even if this thing is more expensive, it's worth it. So to wrap things up, the Snapdragon X series brings us into a new era where you can have solid performance and not sacrifice battery life. And this goes for developers and creators, business users, of course. Now to see my previous comparisons about battery life and performance, you can check out these two videos right over here. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Thank you.